Well, good morning. This is the sixth Sunday after Epiphany, um, and this will be the last Sunday because next Sunday after this is Transfiguration. So we'll be, and then Lent will start, and Ash Wednesday is the um, second from last Wednesday of the month. No, February twenty second, whatever that is. Um, that's that's Ash Wednesday. But I'll tell you about that when we get there. Two weeks. Two weeks from the day is is Ash Wednesday. Um, and so we're, you know, just clipping along here. Um, uh, I don't remember the last time we've gotten this far in the season of Epiphany in Series A. Because normally we just, it all depends on where Easter falls. And sometimes we make it to week five, but not usually week six and hardly ever week seven um, in that. But this is, uh, this is good. That I, this is a, a, a wonderful um, readings and kind of the theme um, is I, I think it's pretty blatant through here. So um, what I would like to do is start with the psalm in the back as uh, we do that. Now, if you remember last week, we read from Psalm 119 and we read the Beth part. This is the first part, the Aleph. And if you remember in Psalm 119, every eight verses begins a new section and it begins with the letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And it goes through the whole Hebrew alphabet. And if you had all brought your Hebrew Bible with you, like I asked you to, um, you would see that all the verses would start with the letter, we would call it the letter A here. So verses 1 through 8. And that helped with memorization. It was a wonderful, I mean, when they wrote that, it was a wonderful thing that they could, oh, this is letter A. And they, all the words kind of felt in that. So, um, so this, is, this begins with the longest psalm chapter in the Bible. Um, and obviously the Psalms is the longest book in the Bible. Uh, but we have that. So blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him and their whole, with their whole heart. Also, do no wrong, but walk in the way in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having fixed or having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your just and righteous decrees. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. And so you see, remember, Psalm 119, it's all about the Word of God. So you're going to hear Word of God, precepts, statutes, law. Um, and so um, this all starts out is the one who is blessed, the blessed one. Now, if you remember, in our gospel reading, uh, we're in the midst of the Sermon on the Mount, and it starts out with the Beatitudes. So we kind of, you know, you, oh, yes, that's Beatitudes, kind of stuff like that. But blessed are those. And I, and I like to say, blessed are those who walk in the Lord, who keep his statutes, who seek uh, him with their whole life. And you're going to see how that plays itself out in the other readings, that, that we, you know, we do read God's word. We study it. We meditate upon it. That we, you know, walk in his ways, that we keep it, we seek it all the time. And so you're going to see this theme coming up throughout the rest of the readings as we do that with a deliberate point in mind. And we'll get to that when we read through the rest of those. So, and really that's, you know, that, uh, you know, won't be put to shame, you know, fix my eyes upon him, keep his statutes. So that's kind of that that theme there. So just keep that in mind. Let's start with the Old Testament reading, or go over the Old Testament reading, in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, Deuteronomy, this is the last book of Moses. Uh, Moses is attributed writing the first five books of the Old Testament, or Genesis, Exodus, Exodus Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is... Uh, Moses' last sermon, words, teaching, whatever, however you want to put that, before they go into the promised land. When Moses is done with the book of Deuteronomy, when he's done talking, he's going to be, he's going to die. The Lord's going to take him home to heaven. So is this, he aware of that? 
Um, he knew he was not going into the promised land. Oh, I he, he knew that he was not going into the promised land, which meant that he was probably going to die. Now, what's very interesting, at the end in chapter 32, the last part, which we know Moses didn't write because it says Moses died. <laughs> so we're pretty sure that he probably did not write anything. But it says that he was, he was, his strength was unabated. His eyes were not weak. I mean, he was, I mean, he was 120 years old and as, you know, strong as he was when he was 80, when he was 40. So he, he knew that he was not going to go into the promised land. And that was because he disobeyed God's word. God said, if you remember it, he um, God told Moses at one point, I want you to speak to the rock and the water will come forth. Moses is in anger, hit the rock not once but twice and said, here it is. Eh. You know, he was getting angry, which is kind of interesting because Moses is attributed to being the most humble person in the whole Israelite community. So this really ticked Moses off, so much so. And then we hear later where Moses... He says, I just want you to know, I try to plead and bleed with God. Oh, I'm so sorry. And let me go in until finally Moses writes. And the Lord said, no, we're done. No more. We're finished. You know, it's kind of like when your kid says and you go, nope, we're not talking about this anymore. You're not going. Sorry. Boom. So Moses, he does do that. But he's very concerned about uh, the children of Israel going into the promised land. He, he knows, he already sees the writing on the wall. And he's going to be talking about blessings and curses, following God's word and not following God's word, and what that all means and what will happen. Moses predicted that they would re eventually reject God's word. And Moses was correct. And they did. Um, so here we go. So uh, he writes, See, I said before you today, life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and the length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob to give them. So God is saying, you have a choice to make. Either you follow me or you don't. If you follow me, I will bless you. If you choose not to, you will be cursed. So they can't come back and say, oh, God's not fair. He didn't warn us about this. Moses, throughout the whole book of Deuteronomy, is warning them to no end, saying, make good choices. Just make good choices. Follow what the Lord says. Do what he says, and he will bless you. Now, initially, they did. They, they, they did, and there are times when they do follow, and God blesses them. But then what happens is that life gets good, and they forget, it, they forget where all this goodness came from. They're thinking, oh, look at what we did. And then they either turn into themselves, or they start to worship false gods. And that's when the, then it falls apart again. So there is this kind of cycle till eventually at the end, they reject God and God has to say, nope, in the Babylonian captivity, you know, he punished them for their own good. Um, and so you have that. So we have here Moses, the Lord speaking through Moses saying, um, I want you to walk in my ways. I want you, you are going to be different. When people come to Israel, they're going to go, my, you act differently. You speak differently. You do things differently than the rest of the world. Because ultimately, God wants all to be saved. And he says, you are my chosen people. I have chosen you to do this so that everybody can be part of the kingdom of God. Everybody can be part of this nation uh, that we have. And so he, he, Moses hits heavy on this, you know, life and good, death and evil. So you have a choice. So that was 
And that's really pr pretty much the message that Moses has here about be careful what you choose. Make good choices, you know, as you, in doing that. As <clears throat> I often, I should say, as uh, my ch children, they hear from their parents when they go out, make good choices. Mm -hmm. And they go do their things. Make good choices. Mm -hmm. You know what the choices are. We taught you, you know, what's right and what's wrong. Make good choices. Um, and so God's saying that to us. And it doesn't matter how old we are. <laughs> We make bad choices all the time, yeah. but then God says, "You know, here, here, you need to make you need to make these good choices. You have to do this." So, all right. Question: Yes. First of all, the, the wording about the statutes and rules. Mm -hmm. This was long before the Psalms. I know. Where do you think the psalm writer may have got this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like you're reading it. You're going, "Did we just? Did I just? Did we just hear that in the Psalms?" Yes. So. You will, you will hear that. And then also, like verse 19, I call heaven and earth to it. Yes. I'm surprised that this was in Deuteronomy. I always thought this was in Judge or Joshua. Um, it, it was, it, it actually starts in the book of Exodus. When God, in Exodus 20, he, he gives the law for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And part of this is these blessings and curses. And he says, I'm going to call the mountains and the sky, all creation is to be a witness to this. So that we will later on, and you and you will hear this. The book of Isaiah uses the, this kind of mm -hmm. the creation is witnessed against you by what you did and by what you didn't do. Um, uh, Zechariah. I mean, there's a lot of the Old Testament books talk about that. This is they. This will be a witness. They will be witnesses against you. They will be seeing what you're doing and not doing. Because they think, oh, God's not here. He doesn't know what we're doing. He says, I have all of creation that's going to be witness. And they will step forward. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, it's, and it's very in, in uh, uh, kind of legal court terms. You know, he's going to say, bring the trees on this witness stand and do you promise tell the truth? And yep, we saw them. We saw them. We witnessed them do this. So this is that. That goes back to Exodus 20 and following. <clears throat> um, that that uh, God speaking through Moses with with that, so it's part of the, the the code or the legal system that that was very common in those days. That they were they would have witnesses. I witness, you know, we have that. You know, when someone gets married, you know, we have witnesses that they got married. And they sign the little thing, and, and I sign it, and 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 we have that. It's just that that God says, I'm going to use my creation to do that. Any other questions for that? All right, let's jump over to the gospel reading in Matthew chapter 5. Now, we've been reading through the Sermon on the Mount. But we've been, I mean, for the last three weeks, four weeks, we've been reading from um, Matthew chapter 5. As Jesus continues to go through uh, the Sermon on the Mount, he, um, I like to say he likes to turn up the heat, and there's no wiggle room in his law. Meaning, we can't justify our wrongdoing in what any way, shape, or form. He, he, there's the bar, and then Jesus just raises it to no end. And you'll, you'll hear it. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said uh, to those of old. This is Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 5. This is Moses. You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. And they would go... Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever assaults his brother will be liable to the council. Whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell fire, to the hell of fire. So Jesus, he says, it's not just that you don't physically murder someone. It's what's in your heart. It's uh, you're angry with your brother. Angry so bad that you are, uh, you know, kind of, it gets, and that you want dem, that your whoever to be, have a demise. That uh, insults, this whole you fool would be, well, that was a very derogatory term. That's what Jesus was saying. I mean, the, the, the Greek word is raka. Um, that, I mean, it, it's pretty bad. You empty head is kind of, it's translated, but it's more than, well, you pick whatever word you want to put in there. So Jesus says, so 
you know, it's not just the physical act, but it's, you know, what's going on in your heart, what's coming out of your mouth. Now, we also know that while we might not have bad thoughts and we might not do bad actions, but Martin Luther says in the, in the catechism that part of this, the, the fifth commandment, you shall not murder, mm -hmm. is if we see somebody who needs our help and we don't help them, it's as if we are killing them. If God has blessed us with whatever means and we see somebody in need and we know that they need help and we know that we can help them and we don't, we're just as guilty. So, you know, Jesus turned it up. Luther kind of turned it up, you know, things like that. So um, then he goes on. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. So we have this, if you remember you have some, someone, you, you have something against someone else. You remember, I don't know how you would forget that, but you would go, oh, I need to go make things right. So you would go make things right. Now, the, the, the other patches that help us to do that would be Matthew 18. The, if you remember, if someone sins against you, go and confront them. And if you do, you win your brother back. If they do not, bring a couple other witnesses so that they, and if not, bring it to the church. And if that doesn't work, then you treat them as uh, a pagan, saying you, you're, not gonna, you're not part of the kingdom of heaven. So this, you know, and it's like you remember that they did something against you so that you would go. And really what Jesus is saying, because they would offer their gift so that they could be forgiven. And Jesus is saying, if you want me to forgive you, then you should go ahead and forgive them. Because in chapter 7, in Matthew's Gospel, is the Lord's Prayer. And that whole thing, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if there is someone that has wronged you in many ways... Okay, and you know that that person would not accept your presence, but if you pray for them, is that the same yes, thing? Yes, I think it's that you you are, you know, if if you come to that point where they're not, they want nothing to do with you, then you, there's nothing else you could do. You still are, you still want to forgive them. Sure. And really, what what is when we say we want to forgive someone? What are we saying? For Forgive those who trespass against yeah, us. Yeah, what, what do we say when, when we say, I, if you did something against me and I say I forgive you, what, what do I give up in saying if I forgive you? I forgive up the right to hurt you the way that you hurt me. That's really what forgiveness is all about, saying okay. I'm not, I'm not going to get back at you. I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to continue this snowball mm -hmm. and saying, but I, you know, and... But part of that doesn't mean we need to be around each other anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be, you know, there, there, there can be a separation in saying, this is not good that we, because this is not working. And yet, in, in the Old Testament, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? That, that was, and Jesus talks about that a little later in the, um, in the, in the, in the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. He says, you've heard that. You've heard that said. I tell you, really, mm -hmm. you're going to forgive. And you're you're you, listening to what he's right. teaching. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, what's very interesting, who gave the law in the Old Testament? Who gave the law to Moses? God. God. But specifically, which person of the Trinity of God? Who do Holy we believe? Holy Spirit. Jesus. We always attribute the... And the angel of the Lord, or the man of the Lord, or the voice of the Lord, is always the second person. So Jesus is going back, I know this, because I told Moses that. I told him right now, do not murder. But I'm telling you, it's not just physical. Yes. It's, you know, emotional, in your heart. spiritual, in your heart. I, he, he raises it so that... What he's saying here is that some of you think that just because you haven't physically murdered anybody, you're getting in heaven because you haven't physically. But what, what words have you said to others? I mean, have you helped others who are in need and you chose not to? You're just as guilty. It's like Jesus said, you're going, well, that's not fair. I mean, because who would, 
who's the only sinless one? Who has not broke that commandment ever? Jesus. It was Jesus. The rest of us are all guilty of that. All of us. At one time or another. Oh. And because we're driving behind somebody who doesn't know how to drive and you want to. <laughs> I just want the button to put them in the big traffic jam over yeah. there for a couple hours. Just to, of course, I would be over there too with the rest of us. Well, I uh, know years ago what I did in the prayer wasn't very nice, and I'm sorry for it now, but at that time I wasn't very sorry. I had uh, my three or four boys, whatever, who were in their tricycles, and we were in the middle of the block, and they'd ride their bicycle on the, on the sidewalk. Yeah. And we had a neighbor at the corner who was always at her window making sure nobody got on her grass. Oh, yes. Oh. So I instructed the boys, don't put not one wheel on her lawn. So they got to the corner, and I'm standing there in front of our house watching them, and she came out, and she was chewing them up one side, down the next, and I walked down there, and I said, now, uh, Mrs., I won't say her name, H., I said, they're just riding their tricycles. You're not hurting, well, they belong in your yard, she said. I said, uh, your fenced yard. I said, I'm not raising animals. I'm raising children. And she was really upset, and her husband came out and got her back in the house. And I came home, I was just a steam, and I told the boys, you're okay, but just don't go on her lawn. So she was very angry with me. So when I'd be, we had an alley in our backyard, and I'd be in the backyard, and she'd be walking down the alley. And I just, I said, good morning, Mrs. H. Good morning, good morning Mrs. you know, mm -hmm. just went on. And then I'd be in the front yard mowing. She'd come down the front, and I'd, good morning. And it got so when I'd come outside, she'd come down and talk to me. Yeah. I thought, yes. Yeah. I, I said, I killed her with kindness. Yes. <laughs> well, we, but I just couldn't leave it go. Right. I thought, this is not Otherwise, good. it hangs over you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we had a neighbor the same way. His name was Bill. I'll say Bill. Mm -hmm. And he he was two doors down. Um, and, you know, all the kids, we would ride our bike up and down the side. We would never go on as long. But he would come out and yeah. yell at us. And, yeah. and then, for whatever reason, I went over to his house because... I think, I asked him if I could shovel his snow. I said, and he says, yes, that would be nice. And ever since then, I was his best bud. It was like he was looking for a friend. It was just kind of the strangest thing, so. But that happens. All right, um, verse 25. Enjoy. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. So this is, uh, Jesus is saying, you you know, make things right, you know, because this is the, so he's, and here is a very visual thing for them to understand, the, the disciples there. Um, verse 27, you have heard that it was said, you should not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery in his, in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body be th and be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go to hell. So Jesus is using what we call hyperbole here. I, everybody's got their eyes here. I still have my hands. Mm -hmm. I mean... Did Jesus really mean that we should poke our gouge our eyes? No. But he's using hyperbole to say this is this is this sin, you know, is so bad that it would be better for you not to see than to fall into that temptation. So once again, they could say, but I have not physically broken the sixth commandment. And Jesus says, Well, According to your heart, you have, you have done this. So that's what's going on. Uh, verse 31, it was, uh, was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. Now, this is Moses again. They're getting ready to go into the promised land. They receive the Ten Commandments. Obviously, Sixth Commandment, don't commit adultery, don't divorce. Um, and yet, divorce must, be, must have been running rampant in the wilderness wandering. Because Moses, I just say, Moses caved in and said, before you decide to divorce your wife, you have to, get, you have to go through a process and say, 
here's a certificate of divorce so that you, that she, if she wanted to, if she could, she could go marry somebody else. Now, by the time we get to Jesus, there are two rules of thought on why one can divorce uh, his wife. It was never her divorcing him. It was always he divorcing her. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Um, and, and Jesus kind of tells us which one it is. The first one, and I remember which one it, which this one is called, uh, but um, it was if she committed adultery, if she was sexually impure. In fact, Jesus even says, um, if anyone divorces his wife, except on the grounds of sexual immorality, uh, makes her commit adultery. So there's, this was, she was caught in the act. And if you remember, there was a time when, when Jesus was standing around and they brought this woman who was, uh, who committed adultery and they said, oh, she committed adultery. But the, the law was you had to bring the guy and the girl and they were both to be stoned together. They just brought the one. So they kind of missed the, what Moses said. Um, but Jesus said, and this was, you know, one of them was that, you know, if she was found to be sexually immoral, then there was grounds for divorce. The other one was, you burned my toast this morning, I'm going to divorce you this afternoon. <laughs> there was that other, that other, you know, it was, it was like, what? You burned, what? So that was, you know, Jesus is saying, that other one was, and, and, what was what commentators think were happening was that that a woman was married to a guy, but she wanted to be with somebody else, so she would deliberately burn the toast so that the guy would hand her a certificate of divorce so that she could go somewhere, so she could go with the other guy. That was kind of the the thought there um, in in dealing with that. So there was this, but Jesus says, unless you know, if she commits, and I would, and we would say, and if he, I mean, there's there's the grounds for that. Not that you have to, you know. I mean, there's always forgiveness. There's always, you know, you can get back together. But Jesus kind of says that there, there is this, if this happens. Now, but then he goes on, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Wow. So nobody gets married again? I mean, I know a lot of people who divorced mm -hmm. and got remarried. Mm -hmm. Are, is that, you know... Is that what's going on? I mean, Jesus is pretty clear on this. I have married people who have been divorced and remarried. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it, this says this. Obviously, there's forgiveness of sins. Obviously, people learn their lesson. I always like to say that. And with that, I also know that, and it's not just in the church, but worldly statistics, that those people who marry, divorce, and marry again have a higher rate of divorce the second time and then if they do it a third time and a fourth time, by the fifth time, you might as well just not. Don't even do it because it's, you know, just start filing now. So, um, and with that, so, you know, we, you know, what, you know, we, there, Jesus says this. I mean, this is okay. So Jesus says, you know, this whole marriage thing is pretty important. Now, we all know there are times and places when people get married for the right reasons, but then... Things happen. Mm -hmm. Things fall apart. Whatever. You know. And, and, and I always say, let's try to work things out. But then there comes a point where it won't work. It, won't work. it just won't. I'm going, it would be better, you know, it would be better for you to break the sixth commandment as opposed to the fifth commandment in murdering your spouse. <laughs> I mean, if you were to rank them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and things like that. Um, and so that, that's what happens. So... This is one of those, I, I'm preaching this Sunday and I'm, I'm debating whether or not I even want to touch the, the topic or just let it ride because there, there's a lot. I mean, you can look out and you're going, oh, there's a lot of, that's there. I mean, my own family, we, there, it's there, you know. Well, my um, parents divorced when I was in sixth grade and I hated to see that happen, but yet it was a relief. Yes. Because they were arguing so much Correct. that I would go in the bedroom just yes. so I wouldn't hear it. Oh, yes. And, right. Yeah. So. so, you know, that, and that's why, you know, we, and Pastor Stecker and I, and, and Pastor Shoemaker, I mean, we try to do our, have them do their homework up front, mm -hmm. especially if it's a second 
because I have to ask the question, what happened? Because we don't want you to do that again, mm -hmm. you know, and being honest with oneself as to whatever that is, mm -hmm. you know, and it could be the other person was totally unfaithful, you know, and okay, then, then yes, we get that. But it takes two to tango sometimes, mm -hmm. and you got to, you know, figure that out. So that's always, you know, and, and it's, it's good that you, you, you should, we should work through that just because you don't want to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Because usually, whatever baggage you brought from one and you bring in the other, it's still there. Yes. So if you still have dirty laundry in your suitcase, <laughs> it's gonna air, <laughs> it, 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 will, it will come out again. So whatever that is. My parents were divorced because my father was abusive. Mm -hmm. And he was an alcoholic. Yep. And he beat me with a razor strap. Yep. And pushed my mom down the stairs when she was pregnant with my brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and there's all... My mm -hmm. mom tried and tried right. and tried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when she married my stepfather who raised me, and he had never been married before, mm -hmm. um, she made a wonderful unit yeah. of the family with two... And I have two other brothers. Yeah. And, th and that happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's... And really, it has to do with some sort of sin that they're dealing with. And if they don't, if they don't have that sin under control, it, it does affect, the ripple effects go out. And I've heard many times where, you know, people got remarried and that was, that was the person they should have married the first time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, mm -hmm. and that happened, so. There you go. All right, and verse 33 and following. And again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform uh, to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Uh, and do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Uh, let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. Now, what... What Jesus is talking about here, and, the, and, and sometimes we do that today, but it was more back then that if someone said, you, we, do you promise? Oh, I promise by my mother's grave and by the temple in Jerusalem. And then you would go through all this list and you were going, just say yes or say no. Just <laughs> Jesus saying, don't go through all this rigmarole. Now, do we, do we take oaths today? Yes, sure. we do it all the time. I talked about marriage. People get married, you know, uh, do you promise to, you know, do everything there? Yes. You can go to court of law, promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing the truth, so help me God. Yes, I promise. I, I mean, you're contempt. Yes. <laughs> and with that, so we do take oaths, but it, it is a, I'm not very, I'm, you know, when I married my wife, I said, oh, I promise on my great grandmother's grave that I will, I mean, I didn't say that. I just said, I do. Yes. I will try my best with the help of God. You know, all that goes along with that. So we, we have that. So once again, kind of going with the Old Testament, we make choices. Like we're confronted with, um, you know, what's going to come out of my mouth about to somebody else? Am I going to help someone who's in need? Um, you know, about, you know, a adultery, looking at other people. Or, you know, I'm, I wake up every morning and thank the Lord I get to love the person who's sleeping in the same bed with me forever and ever, amen. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I get to, you know, if someone's asked me to do something, it's either yes or no. And sometimes it's okay to say no. I mean, I think that's our other issue that we use, have a problem with saying yes more than no. <laughs> but that, I'm, that we're all guilty of that. So that's a totally different topic, different sermon. So... One thing I wanted to add, I'm, I'm happy that Jill is working with the children of divorced families. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I wish they could have that. Yes. Um, yes. And I wish more people would take advantage of that mm -hmm. um, because um, uh, we, we see how that plays itself out in the, in the classroom mm -hmm. and then just how mm -hmm. other people, how they act. Well, I didn't want to go back to school. We, I yeah. went to a parochial school and I would pretend I was sick oh, yeah. and all this. Oh, thing. yeah. Finally, my mother worked at a grade school, a public grade school, and she said, well, if you came to my school, would that be okay? Because I felt all the kids knew I didn't have right. a father at home. Right. And in those days, we always had yes. a man and a wife at home, and today, mm -hmm. it's 
completely different. It is different. But yes, that we do have that. And uh, we're, we're encouraging parents to do that. Mm -hmm. That would be good that they, for the that they These kids need to work through this. Because yeah. there's a lot of... Oh, yeah. It's hard. Because it, it, will, it will rear its ugly head later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I, I'm, you know, when, when I counsel couples getting married and, you know, do the whole, tell me, tell me the house that you grew up in. Mm -hmm. And when I hear, oh, my parents divorced, I always, okay, we need to, we need to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two kind of thoughts there. One is, I'm never going to do what my parents did. Mm -hmm. I'm making commitment and it will be for life. I'm going, great. Let's make sure that we do that. The other one is, well, they did it. <laughs> you know, I'm going, no one, I don't know if anybody who goes into a getting married that they're going to, that they're thought of divorcing that person ever enters their mind. But it's always lingering. So we got to talk about that and what God says and how, what things can we do that you can do to make sure you don't go down that mm -hmm. same path. So well, was one of those that said, "I'm going to make sure." Yes, yes, yeah. and that that happened. That that kids yeah. who become adults who live through that. That's yeah. that's you know, yeah. and the the worst time that that in a child's life for parents to divorce is when they are in junior high and high school. Mm -hmm. It's the worst time mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're they're trying to. Probably, if it's younger, we find that that the kids adapt. Not that they get over it, but they adapt better. Mm -hmm. But if it's older, when the kids are older, even adult kids mm -hmm. whose parents divorce later in life, it's like, yeah. they go, was that all a facade? Was that, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to go, what, what, mm -hmm. you know. So, I always tell people, if you think you're having problems, come in and talk to me sooner than later. Because mm -hmm. usually... Later is too late. Mushroom, yeah, I always equate it to I'm going to roll this bowling ball, and I'm standing here, and Pastor, I want you to catch the ball before it falls off the table <laughs> when it's only two feet away, uh -huh. and so you save my marriage. I'm going, not happening. You should have, you should have told me that here. I wouldn't win. Yeah. So, but some people just get a little stubborn. All right. 1 Corinthians 3. We're reading through 1 Corinthians. We'll find out if this has anything to do with making good choices and doing the right thing. Uh, but I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, another, I follow Paulus, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. So what Paul is, is dealing with with the Corinthians, one of the, one of the issues was there was a division in the congregation as to uh, who they were following. You know, some would say, well, I follow Paul. I follow Paulus. Oh, I follow Christ. And what Paul is really saying here, he says, you know, for Apollos and Paul, it, it, no. You, you should all be following the one person, and that's Jesus. And so that's what he's, he's saying. You better make good choices. Now, they were living in a culture where, and, we, and you, you see that all over the place, you better make a choice in who you're going to connect yourself to, mm -hmm. you know. Like this weekend, are you going to be a fan of the Eagles or are you going to be the fan of the Chiefs? That mother has a problem. I mean, so you had it. Last night, either you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. You know, you know forget that we're all fellow Americans. You know, so, you know, Paul is saying, he says, I, I, you are not ready for the meat yet. You're not ready for that because you're still squabbling over who's more important. Oh, 
they would wear their Apollos coats. You know, oh, oh, I was Paul. And, no, it was Jesus. And Paul's going, it's, it's God. We're all part of the family of God. We all, you know. And so, and, and I think Paul is saying here, you need to make a choice. I'm going to tell you what the choice is. I mean, that's really what Moses is saying. You have a choice, but I'm going to tell you what choice you should make. You should follow God. Jesus saying, you have a choice, but I'm going to tell you who you should follow. That's Jesus. Paul. Once again, so we, that we, we see this happening, that we do have the choice. We wake up every morning, and we have a choice. Either we're going to follow God, or we're going to go our own way. There's always a fork in the road. Which way are you going to go? As you all know, following the Lord is much better than going our own way. You know, Now, going our own way may look like, oh, this is great. This is easier. This is easier. Mm -hmm. But... In the end, you're going to go, oh, this did not work. This did not lead to where I thought I was going, you know. And yes, following God, we, and, and Paul will talk about this, Pastor Stecker likes to hit on this, about we got to bear our cross. we got to, you know, help those who are in need, that we don't look at other people as objects, that we do remain faithful uh, to who we made vows to and things like that. That, yes, that's not always easy. There are certain days you go, man, life would be so much easier if I didn't have to do this. Do this. <laughs> or if I was, you know. But God says, but the, you you are blessed and you will be blessed. As, as the psalm says, blessed is the one who follows. It might not seem at the time, but as you look back on it, we are. We always are, you know. And that goes along with that as... Uh, um, that, that we deal with that so so make good choices like my we say to our kids as my mom used to say to me make good choices mm -hmm. you know what the choice you know which way you should be going make good choices in other words make the right, right choice <laughs> you'll be home by 10 o'clock <laughs> you know, that, that excuse me so and as our children grow older and you have to go <laughs> and you're going man, we really messed up on that one. <laughs> no, but, but, you know, and things like that. All right, the colic of the day, so the, the closing, the prayer. Um, o Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people that we who justly suffer the consequence of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, even if we decide to go our own way, what does God do? He'll come and get us mm -hmm. and put us on the right path. And he always does that. I mean, sure, I'm sure that there are, we can look back and say, oh, that was dumb. Mm -hmm. yeah, I surely went the wrong way on this one. And God says, yep, you did. Learn from it. We're not going back there. So that's, that's what's going on with that. Questions, comments? Mm -hmm. He forgives and forgets. Yeah. He, he, mm -hmm. or he forgives and he goes, don't you forget. Yeah. So you don't go down that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Right. You know, like uh, some people shouldn't eat chocolate because it gives them headaches. Mm. Take an so aspirin. Anyway. Just take an aspirin. <laughs> That's your choice. If you want a headache, a migraine, and you enjoy chocolate, don't complain to me that your head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but you know. You know. I I told you you know that. So that's what that is. So I mean that's what happens. So All right, let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.